We're knitting Fair Isle here on a brother machine, brother punch card machine, and let's discuss what's happening. Needles come out to two positions, normal working position and a bit forward. So we have yarn in two feeders. This yarn knits the ones in normal working position. This will knit on the ones that come farther forward. And we have KC plus the MC button depressed. I think of it as main color button. All right, let's add that the purple yarn is in the main yarn feeder, mm -hmm. and the secondary is in feeder B. Right, sometimes known as feeder 2, depending how you were educated. Well, it's got a B on it, that's why I said that. I know, you're right, but we also, we come from all kinds of backgrounds. So there's what we are getting when things are working properly. But we have a friend who's done a restoration and everything except this feature is working properly. So we're going to try to talk him through the fix. And if you're having the same problem, it can help you too. All right, here's what we're working with. The friend has been working on his brother machine. And it's not knitting Fair Isle correctly. And we have a little bit of video showing you this carriage is working. And your MC button must be in. So I'm going to clear it and let's flip it over and look at the bottom and let's see what happens, what should happen when we press this MC button. Now I will start it down and you can see this lever goes down, this lever comes up, this lever goes down and this lever comes up. So it should be a mirror image centered right here. Right. And we're going to cancel it out and we're going to show it one more time. Yeah, see how they're starting to move now. Now here's here's an interesting thing. Let me do this again, and I'll show you one of the things to look for. Notice that I'm trying to do this slowly. And it likes to click yes or no. Right. But what I was going to show is these two don't move at the same time as those two do. And these two might not move at the same speed. But here's what we've got. These, on this particular one, it does because it was just cleaned. Right. Here we go. Watch. Here's the needle butt coming in, and it's going over here, and it's coming down through here. And then the other needle butt is coming in through here. Let's see. Yes. And coming and that back. would be color two. That's the farther forward one. Is right, right. Right. So this being the front of the carriage. Right. The yarn. One yarn is positioned roughly here and one roughly here right. to get one caught. Normal working position is here and the secondary working position is here. So you see where it has to go up. Can you change? Let me hold this and you do that with your right hand so that. Your left hand isn't blocking it. Trace the needle, okay, needle we're path. Okay, going to come from the other direction because I've already moved this center piece. See how that center piece goes back and forth. Oh, that yeah. That can also cause a problem. See, it floats in this so direction. That is not spring-loaded, but it must move freely, am That's I right? right. And, and it must be correct. present. It and could here be. it is. Yeah. Here I'm coming the other way, and you see it just moves, but when it gets to its far side... That's what creates the path here. Do it one more time. I want to make sure the camera is catching it because I was All looking righty. at it with my eyes in here real we life. Go. We're coming through, and now it's starting that center slide over. Okay. And then you see when it gets there. Then it is in shadow, so let's try to point to that. Now push the slide to and fro. All right, this is the center. There we go. Now we can see it better. All right, so we're coming from this way. Needle butt is traveling through. You notice it catches the tip of it, pushes it, and then that defines the path right here on this side for the needle butt. Coming the other the, way. His, his feeder one is working okay. And right. so those stitches are knitting. It's dropping or failing to catch the yarn that's in feeder two. So we're suspecting. And this is the feeder two section. Mm-hmm. But you see, it's got to come down this way and out again. But let's punch and unpunch MC and let people okay. watch that path get created. All right. Now, if it comes in here, 
You see where it went? It didn't go anywhere near that top slide. So if... That's this guy. So right now, MC is off. Is right. that correct? That's when right. It's put, canceled. When we put MC on, it should create a forward needle path. That's it. By right lowering there. these. That's right. Now it sends it across the top and down the side. Down and, and out. out. But if this failed to go into position because the spring was detached or broken... Right then you would get the symptoms he's getting. That's right. Now I'm going to cancel it again, put it back into plain knitting, and you can see this comes up so that anything that comes in here or in here... You can't, we can't actually see that. Let's okay. Okay, do it again. Anything that comes in, you see where it's going to go. It's got uh -huh. to come this way, across the center like it normally does. So that... MC button M... Yeah. One at a time, guys. All right, MC button in. Now when it comes in... got a new path. Yeah, right. it's got to go above this... So this is what allows knit. feeder 2 to knit with color 2. Right. And where are the springs that he'd be looking for? I can clearly feel it and show you people. All right. That's well, definitely spring-loaded. And what we'll do is I'll slip the cover off and we'll show you where the springs are that control those. And by the way, at least in the United States, those springs are still available from suppliers. We don't carry parts, but they are available from some. Right, and some springs are available just from spring purveyors. All right, here we are. The cover's gone. And by the way, we have lots of videos on getting that cover on and off. That's right. That's two screws and the handle and the knob. But right now, cover's off. Here's our cancellation lever that will fall off if we're not careful. But what I want to show you is me moving this MC button. And you'll notice with my little red straw, there's a slide fork here and a slide fork here on either side. And you'll see when they move, there's a spring. And I'm going to try to zoom on that spring gently. Okay. Yeah, we're seeing it. All right, this spring, and here is the flipper that it's attached to right there. So it attaches one end to the slide. You can see the hole in the slide right there. But my big fat hand gets out of the way. Right there. Mm -hmm. And the spring end is in that hole. And the other end is on the flipper post. And here I am. I'm going to cancel it. And there it goes. Now, I will do it again real slow. See that lever coming up? And I'm going to try to zoom even a little bit more. Okay. Now, uh, I messed up. Hang on. Here I am. Okay. okay. <laughs> but you see this lever coming up right here. And when it reaches its locked position, it's controlling this flipper. Wait, right wait, here. wait, wait. i got to catch you. Okay. And I'm going to point with the straw where we're going to look on the top. You see my straw going in. And look where it comes up. Right next to that spring. Because the spring is on a post that the straw is following right on the end of this flipper. If you zoom in, you're going to see right here what looks like a little cutout on the side of that flipper. Yeah. And that cutout is actually... I'm well, sorry, post, audience, it gets really grainy when I zoom that much, but you can see it. But that cutout is actually where the post is bent up off of that flipper. On purpose, right? On purpose. That's, that's right. That's its that design. Spring. Now, here we are. Canceled. Engaged. And back to the top, same thing. Now, it's really easy. Canceled. From what we've seen while doing maintenance... It's really easy to accidentally nudge one of these springs out of position and put everything back together and not realize that you don't have it seated. So that's, in my right. opinion, the number one most likely thing that happened. Right. Let me, let me just show you. Here's my probe under the edge of the spring, and you can see it just is curved on the end and fits in that hole. But this end just pops over the end of that post. 
And so this could very easily pop right off of that post uh -huh. during the assembly process. It can actually it can even happen during knitting while you're knitting. Yes, and because we, we've had people send us some saying it was knitting and then kablooey it quit. Right now, what I do is I take my hemostats and I take the spring off and I close that circle just a little with the hemostats. Then I put it back on the, the post. end of the spring circle right. that's sitting on the post to make <laughs> it right. more secure. Exactly. These are really bad about that. The ones on the end of these flippers, which are your part buttons and your slip buttons. And those little springs right there are bad about the end stretching in use. And I take them off and I take the hemostats and I just close the circle up a little bit and then put them back on. So, there's every likelihood that if Fair Isle is not working for you, but everything else is, and the thing is clean, that this is your problem. Yes, that's what I would do, is check those springs and make sure that they're controlling the flippers. And you can do it from the underside by engaging the yeah, button. No need to dig in if you're right. not seeing the problem we're showing. But Engage if the button and see, is that loaded? And you can hear it. And here's the thing to remember. It will move in and out of position without the spring, but it won't stay where it belongs. Exactly. You should hear this. It's pretty firm. That's right. It should snap into place. And it will also snap into place from the top. Hear it? So now, you can as check it in I think we position. should mention there is one other possibility still in the same area, and that's that the cleaning was good but failed to remove maybe some corrosion on the post that holds the um, flipper. Didn't you tell me that? This post right here. So if the spring is not strong enough to overcome an impediment, that's it, true. it could happen. You can see that by engaging the button. And it happens much more with these guys than it does with these. It's still a possibility. And the other one is that this slide inside of the button assembly is not clean enough to move smoothly when the button is engaged. And we do actually have a whole video on advanced cleaning of that area. Yes, we do.